So a few years ago in Corvallis, I uh, I'd given a talk about uh, uh, my hope that HP would uh, pursue a construction calculator, and uh, sadly it didn't come to be. But uh, I've been thinking about what makes an effective calculating tool, partly because of the industry I'm in. I'm out there in the muck. On, fri on Friday, I flew here. On Thursday, I was on a hill planting 35 trees in five inches. And uh, so uh, the environment that I, the sandbox that I play in is probably quite different than yours, although I am an engineer. Um, so I'm going to give my perspective on a calculating tool. I'm purposely going to avoid the word calculator for the next half hour. And, uh, and I hope you'll understand why. So um, in 2008, was it we were in Corvallis? I can't remember. Mm -hmm. um, after, uh, on our final dinner, Vern uh, drove me uh, to our, uh, wherever we ate, I can't even remember. Um, but on the way, he said, he asked me, have you read this book about the black swan theory? I said, uh, no, I've never heard of it. This is the amazing thing about such a small group of people that uh, the intellectual interests are so varied that I was just blown away. So Nassim Shalab uh, has a, a new book out called Anti-Fragility. And so this is why I've taken the second half of the title. From that. So here's, here's all my entire argument in one slide. And I was inspired by Gene's talk this morning. How many of us, not, not individually, but how many of us have a smartphone and a tablet at the same time? All three. Okay. So where's the convergence if you're carrying around two no. devices? And two of devices that are carried, that operate the same OS. It's a law of Apple that they don't converge. <laughs> yes. Okay. So it is. It really is. So my point is that we, out of necessity for amusement, for geek factor, we carry multiple devices. It's a misnomer. When it suits our purpose, we, won't, we, we don't want to watch movies on our smartphone, so we need a sl slightly larger form factor. And so we're going to duplicate <coughs> the same OS, same functionality, but we want a bigger screen. I can, I can uh, end my talk right here. <laughs> Yeah, there, there was a TV ad for, for, for the smartphone that you could stretch out, and, but they don't seem to offer it for sale yet. So the ideal for a business person, and I'll say businessman because that's what it was in the 70s, was your, the measure of your worth was determined by the narrowness, the thinness of the attache case. And the zero Halliburton 3 inch, of course that meant that you didn't really need to carry very many papers around with you because you had someone else in the back office doing all the legwork. We already had an ideal of what convergence meant. Okay, I'm going to ask for, a, just go through a really small thought experiment. What's in your pockets? A wallet? You probably have a multimeter in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> a wallet, some keys, some money in different currency until you know, digital money comes around. Not so smartphone. Not so smartphone. You know, it suffices. Yeah, everybody yeah, better yeah. have a knife. A knife. Unless you, know, unless you travel yeah. with only hand luggage. Yep. Yes. So that's my problem. Is I brought my spork, but I couldn't bring my knife because I travel with hand luggage. Speak for yourself. I carry a bottle. Of <laughs> okay. So pen pencil. I, I noticed I did a quiet poll. Uh, wristwatches are somewhat out of fashion, but really. Even among the young crowd, there is a bit of a resurgence. I don't know, I, I'm a watch geek, so I, I read some of the forums. Uh, Casio has made some inroads by uh, aligning their G-Shock series with hip hop artists. So there is, there is a cachet like Apple has. Okay. They're all digital. But you are all in a professional setting or a teaching setting. Let's take this a little bit further. What if you need to carry more? This is how I get dressed in the morning. This is how my trades get dressed in the morning. It's part of our uniform. It's as much, it would be much the same if you were an emergency responder, a, um, 
uh, a police officer, a fireman, there's a uniform. It's simply not good enough to carry an iPhone. That's not, that doesn't help you do your job. So I, I'm reminded because Ted and I had uh, some conversations a few years back. Uh, Ted, of course, wrote the marvelous surveying software. Um, there's a company, American company, called Write in Rain. They produce waterproof journals. You can write in them with pencils, uh, cedar case pencils, and they work remarkably effectively. Uh, the Carpenter's Pencils, I've just had a conversation with Bill, a company out of California, the General Pencil Company, amazing pencils for dirt cheap. So the, the list is already growing, you can see. Permanent mm -hmm. markers, mm -hmm. tactical flashlight. I can't tell you how many times I've been in the dark. I'm not going to be able to find my way back to the truck to pick up a flashlight for incidental use. It has to be on me on person. Mm -hmm. Does it have to be green? It does not have to be. <laughs> a multi-bit screwdriver. Um, in America, I know there's, it's not very common to use Robertson uh, square head screws, but in Canada, definitely. And you have a mixture, Phillips, Robertson, the occasional flathead. And you're going to carry an assortment of cordless drill bits. So convergence is rapidly becoming divergence. Measuring tape. Rafter square. Now, I mentioned these at the very end because I don't treat them just as uh, as tools of the trade. These are nomographs. The rafter square has equations and conversion tables etched on it. Um, we invariably end up using both a standard imperial measure measuring tape and sometimes a metric imperial measuring tape. Part of what you will, uh, I hope, appreciate from this. And by the way, this is this is this. These pants are made by a Swedish company, Black Later, and if you get a chance, look them up. They're they're incredibly well designed pants. But you end up much like a service officer in an army, or, or you you have to be dressed for the occasion if you're working in the field. Um, part of what I hope to convince you of is that. Um, a lot of this stems from the fact that the um, cost of failure on a job site is so astronomical that first of all you're going to come equipped with a minimal set of tools, but more importantly you will pay for redundancy. The o very opposite of the convergence argument, you will pay to have multiple measuring tapes. You will pay to have multiple pencils. I had asked one of my trades to send me a photograph, but he didn't. Um, he, he walks around with four Sharpies. To counterbalance what Gene said about, uh, you know, you, could, you may need multiple calculators. Um, the multi-tool is the first, it's the first line of defense. You have a basic plier. But for us in Canada, it is useless in terms of a screwdriver because it doesn't have a Robertson yet. Okay. There are three different types of tools. Again, a couple of years ago, I gave uh, some outlines on, on the steps from a basic introduction to a subject all the way down to mastery. Well, I've simplified that, and um, Felix's talk was very revealing as well, because he talked about <coughs> that, that thick tail, and it was entirely focused on the calculator as a learning tool. But there are two other aspects or two other ways that I would divide the tool market. Professional tool, the 30B, although being desk bound often, or even if you were in a mobile setting, the laptop, tablet may suffice, and its value is diminishing. But there is that overlooked section of the market, and I will repeat myself, uh, the field tool, the field calculating tool is an open market. When I spoke about these, uh, this theme and these topics before, I had couched it in a trajectory that assumed that the starting point would be uh, HP's current lineup of calculators 
and more importantly, its lineage. But as, although we all enjoy the nostalgic aspects of that, for this talk, I've tried to outline a trajectory that's untethered from HP's past. So I'm trying to talk about what form a calculating tool uh, could be. The need is there. The need for doing calculations in the field is there. And I, you know, I don't care whether the battery is charged with a USB and a multi-pin connector like Gene just had the query, whether we can run out and get AAA batteries. It really is immaterial to me. The point is that if it hits a certain price point and it's, it's robust enough, it will be used. And again, if the nostalgia is from our perspective that it should have ever more delight and surprise features, that's not the type of device I'm talking about. I'm talking about a device that fulfills a need to help you do your job. Convergence is another way, and this is why I took exception to the, to the theme of this conference, pilot on. And this is, a, this is actually, a, uh, if you ignore the English and just say pilot on, our good friend Jeff uh, Football would have, would have he would have was forced to take a course that extended over the weekend. Otherwise, he would have been here. Okay. Well, one of his colleagues takes amazing photographs. This this fellow is a pilot for Iberia Airlines, Ishmael Jordan. Um, and the question is quite simple: Do you want to replace this and entrust this to any tablet on the market? <laughs> and it's happening. Lufthansa just approved tablet for corporate use. Yeah. For corporate use, but cockpit. No, cockpit. Oh, cockpit use. Okay. Maps go out. I see. Okay. So the uh, the the question really is, whatever device we say should be universal or a common platform, we have to ensure that save the amazing encasements that Griffin has that allow you to throw it against the wall. The device itself <laughs> itself should be robust. A rafter square, if it falls off a roof can be retrieved and is still functional because it's a nomograph. A measuring tape can be uh, retrieved and it will still work. And if it doesn't work, you've got two, two others in the, in the car. Do you want to take your iPad up on a roof and do rafter calculations in the rain? In one of our cases, yes. Yes, that's right. <laughs> OK, here's another counter argument. I don't know whether you've seen this, uh, this whole decomposition of uh, unified um, infotainment systems, but uh, uh, Brian Greenstone, sorry, is there a question? Oh, uh, Brian Greenstone is, um, I, I guess he must have done well because he owns both an Aston Martin and a Fisher Karma, but he has eviscerated the Fisher Karma uh, UI, this, this, which is essentially a tablet in the car. And the level of difficulty of going from function to function, the inconsistencies in UI, and the the generic bugginess has just caused him to throw his hands up in frustration. It's 45 minutes well spent if you go and look this, uh, this video up. It really um, encourages you to think deeply on what a field tool is. When you're moving in a car, now this car doesn't have a great range, but when you're in, a, in moving a large mass around you and you're going 60 miles an hour, 100 plus kilometers an hour, and you're fiddling with your your primary interface, bad things can happen. I don't care what the geek factor is. So let's, let's step away from the traditional model. Uh, looking around, unusually I'm wearing a shirt with a shirt pocket, but many of us don't anymore. Even our golf shirts don't have shirt pockets. Um, so the shirt pocket form factor is, is no longer really a target. It's hard if, to get pocket protectors too. Well, I was going to say that. <laughs> Just the way the sleeve garters, I mean, I, I grew up uh, in an era where my uncles were poring over drafts tables and they had sleeve garters to keep their sleeves away from all the erasings that would come on the, on the drawings. Um, we have to come up with a new form factor it doesn't have to be revolutionary. We're not talking about 3D holographs. It has to be simple. It has to be robust. It has to take the environmental conditions in which people in the field work. 
And maybe it is. Most of us carry, I think, our mobile in our, in our front pant pocket now. So it, ha it means a slightly different form factor. The wrist is and has been uh, a very useful place to hang tools off of. And I don't have a photograph of this, but uh, you know, I said one of the essentials was those bits, those, uh, those cordless drill bits. Well, they have magnetic holders that you just strap on your wrist, much like an old seamstress would with her needles. And you just stick, stick the bits on there, as well as any errant screws that you're dealing with. So tool watches have continued to prosper. And they've diversified. And servicing niche markets, emergency responders. G-Shock has a, a tremendous following. I put this photograph up because this is an unusual model that allows you to display two, two time zones um, on the front face. So lots of watches can tell you a second, second what the time is in a second time zone, but at a glance, if you're a pilot, you want it on the front oh, face. The second one is the classic <laughs> a mechanical version of it. A lot of pilots adopted that. Bottom one is a Sunto Core, which is an, uh, what's known as an ABC watch, altimeter barometer compass watch, used in climbing. Um, Timex has a version of ABC with graphical display. Um, I have seen ladies with very slender wrists use this as a training device in running. And I'll tell you why, because the, the size of the watch is quite immense. It's not something you would typically put on a wrist to go out to listen to opera. It's, it's, it's a tool watch. Mm -hmm. But there is a market that will accept that size because it fulfills a need. Yeah. Uh, the downside about wrist operation is that, you know, by definition, it means single-handed operation. So if you're thinking in terms of a calculating tool, is it sufficient? Oh, yeah. I asked about uh, Gunter's uh, Bluetooth keyboard, but maybe because of the environmental conditions, uh, we do need to pursue something like a projected uh, keyboard. That's fine. What do you do about the display, the results display? The keyboards is a tractable problem. There are solutions out there. What do you do about the display? This is the thing that I, I think has the most <laughs> promise that I see, if we could take essentially what is uh, a Kindle Touch and shrink it to a size for mobile phone use. I don't know what, what the numbers are, you know, I don't know what the cost, where the break even point is. I'm only thinking in terms of a calculating tool. And my belief is, and it's been repeated, uh, well, I guess I can't say it's been borne out, but I see it because, uh, I see the trades in the field perpetually looking for solutions. Yeah, they'll, they all, they've all adopted iOS wholeheartedly, but, uh, and they'll use them on certain occasions, but I've never seen one brought out in the rain. They're not risking a $700 device just to do a calculation. Ergonomic considerations, they have to be operable with large hands. Um, again, I wish I had a photograph. I have a, a carpenter and a mason whose hand is about four times my hand, <laughs> the size of my hand. So uh, you're, you're looking at a demograph. You have to be able to handle it in low light situations. Obviously, many of us are bifocal, but there are a lot of people out there that you not only are wearing bifocals, but you don't have the luxury of controlling the ambient light. You're in near dark conditions. What is the con cost of contact switching? I've heard l great things about the emulators. I have a very simple question. If a client calls you, a customer calls you and says, how much lumber, paint, do I need? And how much is it going to cost? What are you going to do? You're going to put the phone <coughs> down, switch to your calculator app, do calculations. The beeps are, by the way, running along the con uh, conversation because they hear that. And then you're going to pick it up and say, oh, I'm sorry, I, you know, I had to put my phone down because I had to invoke my emulator. There's your anti-convergence argument all over again. 
or if the notes about the problem that you're trying to solve are in the notes app. This is, this is the DOS world all over again. You have to exit the application, boot the next application, write down intermediate results, and hope for the best. Mm. Well, usually copy not quite results true. from one app and paste them in another. Yeah, but you're not reviewing them. You're doing a context switch. Well, but you're doing a context switch when you look at the calculator to do the thing and then look back over, aren't you? If you, do it you on have them side by side. That's okay. that's that's multitasking. You but don't. I have one set. I'm just trying to think. I have one set of eyes looking at the calculator. It's not yeah. looking at the note simultaneously. Do you have multiple windows up right now, Gene? Yeah. Okay. Why? You can only look at one window at a time. That's true. But that but enables me to switch fast between them. So when exactly. I hit, when you hit the home button twice, you're able to switch back and forth between apps and paste, copy and paste. I I would argue that the context switch of looking, glancing side by side. At Windows, WebOS allows you to do that. The uh, the much maligned um, did. did. I have to, I happen to have a touchpad under that 150 sale. Um, there is it, it is difficult. Most of us have a diary. Look, I have my diary right here, just out of habit, because when I write something down and I'm calculating, I need to go back and forth, glancing back and forth, and the, and the way iOS is designed, it's, it, it's, it's, I think it's very rudimentary in terms of allowing me to do that. So you would prefer to have uh, a calculator, I mean, if you had some computational tool and you were having your notepad just on a desk, um, you have them both out so you can be doing this, right? Referring uh, and in entering, same, same thing without having to pull the, put this over in a drawer, right? and then write it down and say, wait, what was that last digit? And go dig it out of the drawer again. In terms of, it's, it's multitasking sometimes in iOS, you're saying, but not at the same time. That's right. So let me, okay, let, me, let me say this in, in what you're, um, I think what you're alluding to. Let's put iOS to one side. Let's blue sky. Let's say it's an e-ink device. It's seven inches. It has the same form factor as the Nexus, or it's the Note side. But I can have a Note app and a calculator side by side. And I'm writing something on my note or I'm retrieving something from notes while I've got the calculator. It's not a single purpose CRT screen that says I'm in one, two, three, and oh, by the way, the actual problem definition was in WordPerfect. So let me exit one, two, three, go back into WordPerfect, and then come back and see what I have. I think you just described a notebook. <laughs> yeah. But again, so let's go back to the construction calculator side. I, I sent Tim the moment this came into my email. DeWalt has introduced a whole range of construction apps for iOS devices. Are they used? They're out there. They're not used because the cost of failure of the device is too high. The device is being asked to be your phone, which is essential. And yes, they'll, the trades will put this app on, but they won't necessarily bring it out in bad environmental conditions. So this is what I had hoped HP would go for in a physical form factor. And they have further taken the concept and are starting to specialize it. But note, notice these comments. Coming soon, finish work, HVAC, plumbing. I think an opportunity is still available. Is there a market for specialization? I'm just throwing out counter arguments because people are buying these tools. This is not very legible, but this is a laser uh, distance meter. Mm -hmm. And Fluke has differentiated the market or segmented it into three areas, 50 meters, 80 meters, 100 meters. So the market is sustaining that degree of specialization. And these devices, I have one. I have the 100 meter one. Uh, are about $120. It saves me time day in, day again. I have a measuring tape, I have a 100-foot measuring tape, and I have one of these devices. Do you know why this device is incredibly useful? Again, in the small print, reduce estimating errors, let the meters do the math. It's got a simple Pythagoras theorem <coughs> calculation in it. You measure horizontally, and you measure at the high point of a wall, and you can tell what the vertical distance is. So if you're in a, if you're in a 
um, a warehouse, a large house. I've been in a house where the walls were 14 feet, and they varied from 14 feet to 10 feet. I would lay the meter down on the floor, and I would take it, measure it, and it would, do the, uh, it would uh, triangulate and give me the vertical height. There's a calculator built into a meter, and it will me measure area and volume. Nobody's bringing, they're not saying here, we'll measure the distance, you measure the two distances, and then go to the, the iTunes store, the app store, and download the <laughs> Fluke app. That's ridiculous. Dedicated because the time to do the calculation is essential and the time, uh, the cost of failure is too high. Convergence in life. Now I've spent the whole talk talking about anti-convergence. These are two very small anecdotal incidents that, that, that I hope balance it. I'm not against convergence. I'm just, I want us before we jump wholeheartedly on this trend to step back and say, um, what do we use calculating tools for? If they're just to play around and test and maybe do some educational learning problems, yes, tablet will be great because every student has one. But there are people for whom calculating tools are essential to their trade. Whether they were slide rules, Part of the reason slide rules uh, hung around is they're so effective. They don't need a battery. Mm -hmm. um, some of you know I have another uh, uh, passion, which is typesetting, formal typesetting. So this was sent to me by Alan Braslaw, uh, whom I met at a typesetting conference. So I just had to throw this frivolous picture out. I just received it a couple of days ago. And then I was delighted to see Eddie's t-shirt so uh, there's convergence in design. Um, the reason I missed last year's conference is I spent the better part of two years building a house inspired oh, along a users group, yeah. Frank Lloyd Wright principles um, of building a prairie house in rural Ontario. And since, since I have uh, control of it, I have designed unusually um, many intimate details of it. Um, the, the range hood I designed using the Golden Ratio exclusively, <coughs> chimney cap. And I gave this talk at Tug uh, in India last year, typesetting with masonry, which drew parallels between uh, formal typesetting and architectural design. But in the masonry, I have Euler's equation <laughs> embedded in our house. So thank you very much. No, it's okay. not, because I was writing it oh, as okay. <laughs> I was oh, planting okay. trees, remember, oh, on Thursday. Right. I was yeah, like, right. back was breaking. No, but I will get it to... Uh, I, I just want that link there. Okay. Okay. Comments, questions? Yeah. Yes, please. You definitely hit a point with the divergence and the need for field calculations. For, my, for me personally, as much as I love my iPad, I like to have and my iPod, I like to have a physical calculator and you work on that so I can divert my tablet into my iPad for different purposes, even if my iPod is playing music. And yeah, that's a good, I should clarify, I do not mean a return necessarily to a physical button uh, calculator, and that's why I use this thing, this, this term calculating device. All I'm saying is when you overload a single device, uh, you're, you're going to run into problems with field usage. Yeah, yes, you also said that cost was a factor, that if that single device is low enough cost, you simply have the member work. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, but cost is a, f a factor and cost of failure is a factor. If the device is not designed to work in the field, if you're a forestry person, and it, you know, you, if, let's say it's an IP, it is um, still fragile, then I don't think it's a record. Well, yes. that is, that's one reason companies like Otterbox, yes. use the competitor's name, have All had such, su such success. Uh, and that's why businesses that use the touches, and touches are used very extensively in a lot of businesses, or uh, phones or iPads, are buying a lot of those ruggedized cases. Uh, it's because you're right, you know, you drop the thing and it's dead, you've lost what you were doing today. But, but even so, I, I do still get uh, resistance in the field. 
when, you, when the conditions turn bad, um, well, let me put it another way. In a lot of cases, the phone is left in the truck because you don't want to be disturbed by phone calls. So right there, you know, your convergence, it, it, the capabilities are there, but you don't have them on you. Um, yes, please. So I, what you're saying, in these harsh conditions, you need something that's backlit. No, no, sorry, that's why, uh, sorry, I, I, well, I didn't mean to interrupt. I said e -ink. Okay, you talked about in the dark, yeah. So. I said e-ink because there's high clarity. Okay. I, I, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise back then. Okay. There's Most of these, like the fluke meter, yeah. uh -huh. uh, it's, um, it, it's a very high contrast display, and the, the backlighting is a function, and you only use it very, very sparingly. Okay. Um, you mentioned the ability to context switch between windows, but it seems to me that that essentially doubles the requirement for the size of the screen. And so I'm curious about your comments about uh, size versus uh, the ability of context switch. You're absolutely right, Dave. Um, I don't have a solution. I mean, I'm, I'm, I think there's incredible brain power in this room. All I can, all I've been uh, trying to do over the last few years is articulate the need. I, I really don't have a, a great solution. I'd like something on my wrist because um, many of us, either in in a foreman or, or management or engineering role, timed events are essential. So we're always timing things. Uh, I I'm. I do a lot of lighting control systems, and we have to time you know, when the fade is and all, all that sort of stuff. So if we can extend it on the wrist, that'd be great for me. It may not be great for a lot of people. Um, all I'm looking for is the ability to do proper multitasking. Multitasking, human multitasking, yeah. not computerized yeah. multitasking. Mm -hmm. Yes, Blake? And one technology that seems to be coming up is Siri on the iPhone 4 and onwards where you can finally talk to these things. Um, you yep. can ask it, or you can tell it. You can say start and stop. Uh, you don't need to push a button on your wristwatch, so you've got your hands entirely free. In fact, your example of the wristwatch was a good example of where voice recognition probably will be very helpful. Um, uh, are we going to think about this? Or do people think, actually, the environment is so noisy it won't be useful. Mostly. I was just going to raise that. When you're having uh, drills and hammers and things going, voice, you can't even hear the person next to you, uh, never mind getting articulated uh, commands. The so watch. I don't think voice is a starter. Person. The watch on yeah, says, say why, again, please. Why do <laughs> uh, the music recognition program, the apps on your phone, recognize the song on the radio when, you're, when you've got a lot of traffic noise? That's a great question, but we're talking about probably hundreds of these. You know, you're, you're like, I don't know whether they would recognize it if you were having a conversation at a rock concert level, which is what, what you can sustain. Yes, Jim. Uh, this is kind of a question here, because one of the things I've been noticing is that wrists among young people are bearer and bearer all the time. Yes. Watches seem to be really disappearing. Although with that proviso, as I said, G-Shock, if you read about G-Shock's resurgence, it's because they've aligned themselves with hip-hop artists. They've well, become fashion accessories. What, what I haven't seen, and maybe we can find this and share it on the forum over later or whatever, is, you know, wonder what the trend line of watch sales look like. Uh, because I, what I have found among the young people is, is they have a, a, some kind of a pocket device touch or whatever it may be, whatever uh, brand it is, they're using that for their clock. Yes, you're right. And so I really wonder, you know, what the what the trend line of the watch looks like, and whether it's in danger in some ways more than a calculating device. It's mean. not in danger. Its percentage of usage is dropping, but uh, wristwatch sales have have. Of course, there aren't as many manufacturers, but wristwatches as tool watches are proliferating. And anyone who goes into basic training is either going to have a Timex Ironman or a G-Shock on their wrist. Young people aren't serious. That's true. And when you get into the workplace, your requirements may change yet again. Um, but, but just to counterbalance that, when you say the wrists are barren, I don't find it so. You've got these ridiculous, you know, monster balancing wristbands. You've got Livestrong wristbands. You've got all sorts of things going up and down the wrist. It's just what's happening to the wrist what? Right. Well, it's a tool. When you need it, you'll put it on and you won't take it off. Yes. 
an interesting way to look at, at watches and, and other bits of technology is a, a wristwatch is a piece of jewelry. It's technology that's become jewelry, right? A clock used to be something, there was one of them in the town, it was a building, and now people wear them as fashion accessories. Cell phones are getting that way, right? You see people walking around now with their, their, um, their little ear, their, their Bluetooth interface, and they're basically wearing it as a piece of jewelry. But, but the watches I showed were all tool watches. They're recognized as tool watches. Mm -hmm. They have, yeah. they have a, a constituency, and it, it won't be, I think Richard asked, you know, can you sell 100 million of them? No, but Casio makes a pretty good living with this brand, and it works. This is a diver watch. It tells you how many meters under the water you there are. There you go. Yep. <laughs> Two watches have a, a place and a, and a purpose. Yes? Um, what I'm thinking about is in the future, probably calculators and two watches and other electronic tools outside of tablets, I'm thinking that they're probably going to get more and more specialized to whatever the field requires rather than a general purpose outside yeah. of education. If you go to Fluke, let's say Fluke is the counterbalance to mm -hmm. HP. Fluke is a measurement tool company. HP is a calculating tool company. You can get uh, infrared thermometers. You, now you've got a vibration meter. Why, why would Fluke think it um, judicious to take a laser distance meter and segment it into three products? Clearly, they can they can sustain the price points. It makes no sense to me, but somebody in the back office must have thought this through. And by the way, that technology is not Fluke; it was invented by Lightning and uh, you know, Hilti and Milwaukee. They all have a similar device. So there is, there is enough room for segmentation, and uh, that particular device, architects have adopted for art. real estate agents. They walk into a, a house, they change the units, and they can measure room size and be done with it. Because I noticed there's, there's a company called Calculated Industries, and they have specialized calculators. Yes, that was the talk, actually, in Corvallis with Sam Kim and I had met. I don't think they execute very well. Oh, okay. That's why I say the market the market was there then and I think the market's still there now. Okay. Yeah, but there'll always be two markets. Let's say cameras. The iPad and, and the smartphones and a whole list of other uh, devices are, are taking over. Yes. But Kodak they they, they expanded their market by making a point and shoot camera. <coughs> They wanted as many people to to be involved with photography as possible, so they could sell more cameras. Now, um, if, if if that point shoot kind of a thing is taken over by iPads and smartphones and so forth, so that the massive number, the, the vast majority of photographs are accommodated by those converged devices, that doesn't eliminate the camera completely. Right. You have a specialized, exactly. professional, uh, more dedicated, advanced uh, product. And, and um, Jake's uh, graph, the DNA graph, where, where, you show, uh, where he showed the capabilities of, of um, HP calculator models, uh, surprising the user base, and the user base was, was, was chasing it, is very telling. It, when, when calculators were first introduced, they were introduced as professional tools. They weren't mass market devices. They became mass market devices as the cost drop. It just happened the professional market that they were targeted at was white collar and right. office space. My argument has been for several years that that market exists, it just doesn't happen to exist inside an office. Perhaps. So professional market, but in a ruggedized condition. Panasonic, I think, makes uh, these, these tough books, right? Laptops. Mm -hmm. I see them occasionally, that the people are walking around with them. They're used in the military and in, in mm -hmm. some harsh conditions. And they're they're laptops, but they are ruggedized. Perhaps the professional market that it started with is the only one that's going to end up being left. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the primary one. Uh, yes, yes, I agree. In a different form, because the professional market, if you're if you're tethered to your desk and you have multiple monitors, and the mirror was saying his son had to have a multiple monitor session because he was you know doing atomic <coughs> calculations or something, or probably playing Doom, I don't know which one, but uh, <laughs> if you're tethered to that extent, 
yeah, the choices to do your calculations are, are immense. So you don't, you may not look for your pocket calculator, your patent pocket calculator, or your wrist. Can I ask one other question? Why do you think cars have uh, clocks? We talked about the d demise of wristwatches. Every car that I've sat in has a clock as a primary unit. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Sure. What are you going to do? You're going to take your smartphone out and say, oh, by the way, <laughs> let me, oh, it's on the wrong home screen. Oh, I've got a text. Let me just go to my, yes. it's a dashboard. It's a dashboard to essential functions right in your face. There certainly are a lot of places where a tablet, touchscreen, phone, whatever is not going to be working. I was thinking for some reason of the, uh, the fishing boat shows that are on the Discovery Channel or whatever. <clears throat> Nobody in their right mind is going to have a tablet if they're trying to do stuff out there and all that kind of stuff. So <laughs> there are plenty of conditions where uh, what works in a suburban home or something yeah. is not going to be appropriate. And, that, and that's all I'm trying to shed a bit of light to, is that that, that sandbox is big enough as a market. Uh, many of us are, are from North America. I'm, in Europe, the conditions are the same. But a main driver of the economy here is the housing industry. People buy houses, and they people buy furniture to fill the houses, and appliances and all. That's a pretty big sandbox to ignore. That's what I was uh, uh, you know, presenting those, those years ago, that it's still a viable market, I hope. Okay, thank you.